de Monterrey. That means, I don't freaking know in Spanish. No, I'm kidding. I think it means hole in Monterrey. I think Monterrey was the name of where they had their like plants, like their crop like plantation. I don't know why, but I think the whole part is because a lot of people, I know the reason why uh, growing tobacco in Cuba is so good is because a lot of these like plantation areas, these fields where they grow them are concave, if you will. And it makes it better for like water and everything. So people find a lot, that's all I can say. But the reason why we're smoking this, yeah, it's happy June to all you fiends out there, by the way. But the reason why we're smoking this is not just because it's a classic cigar, Excalibur, fucking King Arthur that shit out of the freaking stone, sword in the stone type shit from like old Disney movies and stuff. But the other reason is because, you know me, I'm in Boston, Celtics fan, kind of obvious that I'm going to be a Celtics fan, but the reason why is because right our back, one and only, what a friggin' machine that guy was, but he used to smoke these bad boys every day. And he started that back in the 60s. So... He used to see other coaches that be winning by 35, 40 points with two minutes left. And they would just be like, up there, like, oh, let's go, let's go. Like, trying to get more, like, airtime on, like, the, on the broadcast cameras. And he was like, you know what? Fuck that. Like, I, I ain't doing that shit. Like, this is going to be a big middle finger to them. And he would, he was a big cigar guy, as, as you probably well know. And he started... His light up a cigar, two and a half minutes, three minutes left in the in the ball game, and they're up like 40, like the Celts normally were back then in the 50s and 60s. And he would just light it up, sit there, and smoke. And that drove coaches friggin' crazy. They hated it. They hated it. But he was a legend. There's no doubt about that. One of my most winning Ever. But uh, we're, yeah, we're smoking this because of him and because this is a cigar I haven't had in a long time. I saw it at a smoke shop I went to. Repu reputable dealer. I mean, well, reputable store. Not the dealer, what am I talking about? Uh, reputable store. And I was like, oh, Scalaba. I haven't seen this puppy in ages. And that's when I was like, cleanse the palate. But I was like, I gotta grab this thing and give this puppy a review ASAP. So, I just looked this bad boy up. It's not bad. It's, uh, you know, it's a medium body with like a nice lightish. I don't know if it's exactly Connecticut wrapper. It's, it's close to a Connecticut wrapper. It's a little bit darker than that. But it's nice, firm, not too tight decent cigar, and it's lit pretty evenly, not too much canoe action happening here, and it's not that staley Dan, as I tell you, because if it's stale, then, like, you're having a miserable time smoking this bad boy, and I will say, the only thing, a little bit of ash on me there, the only thing I say is there's a little bit of the tobacco coming out the end, and, like, when you get that in your mouth, like, I'm like, I don't like doing that, but... Hopefully, not too much more. So let's get a couple more smokes in. Let's see how we're doing out there, you fiends. Not bad. Not bad whatsoever. 
I would say, especially since I haven't had this in like the longest time, I would say it all started when I was going from being an amateur cigar smoker where I'd be getting fillies at like the gas station when I was 18 to like a little bit better getting like a, you know, a punch or a Romeo and Julieta back when Romeo and Julieta was kind of considered as like not that great of a cigar. It come a long way by the way. And I think this is one of the first ones I have where I said like, oh shit, this is a real cigar. <laughs> and I was pants. Uh, so yeah, close place in my heart for this one because I haven't had this in a dog's age. Uh, but I would say, especially since they were growing in Cuba in the 18, like, you know, the late 1800s, eventually, uh, they sold, uh, because this company isn't like one of those Rocky Patel companies that's been owned by the same guy forever. They were owned by, uh, someone in Cuba, and then eventually they sold to someone, and they moved their product to Florida, but they got Honduran tobacco. Uh, which is excellent tobacco. It's pretty nice and soft and as smooth as cheddar. Uh, but yeah, so they they were bought by I believe the same company that makes punch cigars. And punches aren't bad cigars, but this is definitely a step up from a punch in my book. A uh, couple more drag through this bad boy, and then I'm gonna give you my final. <laughs> it is so freaking hot out. So, I'm gonna say that the Hoyo de Monterrey, get my Spanish on right here, Paquito Espanol, as you know, um, the Hoyo de Monterrey Excalibur Edition, I have the power, E Man style, uh, Honduran tobacco. Red Arabac Special, my guy, across many championships, smoking this bad boy. So I'm gonna give this hmm, uh, one, one more puff because this is definitely a complex cigar. This isn't one that I kind of have a number already set in my head. This, I had no idea what I was getting myself into since I haven't smoked one in years. Like maybe a decade or longer. <sighs> Bugs out of here. Uh, so this is very complex, different flavors coming through. It's not like the same flavor all the way through. You get like halfway through and it changes too. But uh, one more puff, then I'm gonna read you your rights. Cigar rights. Oh, it's so hot. It's like 50 this week. 50 degrees, not Celsius. Mother effing Fahrenheit. But now it's 90 plus degrees up. It's like the afternoon it should be getting cold. It's like cooler down. I don't got fans in my house. I don't got like AC in it. So I've been struggling in there. But uh, I'm going to give this Pollo de Monterey. Sorry. I've been waiting a while for this one. I'm going to give this Pollo de Monterey 8.1. Ocho. I'm going to give this an 81. 8.1, final offer, a great week. I'll be coming to you probably this weekend, with, or at least by next Monday, with a review I'm doing on a golf trip this weekend. So, wait up for that one, boys. I'll be coming with some good stuff. And then maybe another one the next week, and then a Father's Day one, probably. We'll see. I don't know. We're going to play it by ear, boys. But until then, you fiends, stay feisty.